Hello, everybody, and welcome to the April 8th segment of Trips and Traps, the first full main track segment of 2009. Andy Serling, Eric Donovan. Very exciting time of year. We don't have any turf races to bring you yet <laughs> in Trips and Traps. Hopefully, we'll have uh, one coming up soon, perhaps uh, next week. But uh, we did want to take a, a good look at the stakes races on uh, Wood Memorial Day, four stakes races being run that day. Uh, but before we get to those races, we have a cheapie we want to get out of the way from earlier in the week. Yeah, we thought we'd at least show one race from earlier in the week. And it was hard. It was also, first of all, obviously only a four-day race week, but also Friday. You couldn't see the races. <laughs> this race, the third race at Aqueduct, two things happened. Bill Place on the outside. He does, he's a little sluggish to start, got some issues, but also worth noting, there were two speeds in this race, and one of them, Trophy Road, probably has a share of issues, just doesn't get out of the gate well, and that allows the other speed, Tater Tut, to get loose in the lead. Yeah, Tater Tut absolutely takes advantage of a Trophy Road's misfortune at the start, and then we see a uh, highlighted toward the back there, Bill Place, who uh, you know is what he is. He's a closer that likes to come from off it, but he's kind of hustled here to stay with the rest of the pack. You know, he may, Perhaps he, he might like it uh, a little bit better to sit behind horses while there's a little bit of a speed duel. He didn't have that luxury here today because he knew uh, the pace would be slow. Uh, jockey uh, Jeffrey Sanchez knew the pace would be slow and kind of sent Bill Place up there to be in a contending position. Uh, going into the turn. Yeah, and you see, of course, Trophy Road, the other speed, is just back and last and not running at all. He, he must have a share of issues. He, he's been laid up quite a bit, and not getting out of the gate's never a good sign. And this is the third race in a row that Bill Place actually ran very well when he had outside trips and races that were dominating the front end. And as you said, he's obviously closer than he wants to be. <clears throat> the pace is honest, but it's not exceedingly fast for these horses. And I thought Bill Place ran very well chasing the whole way around. The question becomes is when is he going to get a more fairly run race or a race run fairly to his favor and how long is he going to be able to maintain this good form? Uh, those are all some good <laughs> questions. He was claimed for 20000 back in uh, January by trainer Richard DeMolo who as you said has gotten some good runs out of Bill Place. Hasn't gotten any wins yet but the three, uh, two third place finishes and a second place finish that you're going to see here. You know I got to think that if there was a fair pace of Trophy Road and Tater Tut hooked up like they looked like they would on paper, Bill Place would have won this race with the with would, a good stalking track. He would have galloped, no yeah. question about it. He's in great form and DeMolo done a great job with them. The thing you worry about with horses in general is they're not going to run their A races all the time. And you want to have them in spots where they can win when they're going to run their good races so you can get the most out of them. Now, Richard DeMolle has done a good job of putting them in the right spots. He was very unfortunate in this race as what happened with Trophy Road, and it wasn't a fairly run race, and he ran a winning race. I just wonder how long he's going to hold his form. I wouldn't mind seeing him get into what looks like a tougher spot, though, if he can get into a spot where there really is going to be an honest pace on a fair racetrack, and I think he can win because he's in great form. Yeah, I'd like to see him get in a race with about seven or eight horses where you're probably you know, going to look at a better pace scenario than you would in a race with the only five horses. Yeah, and even at Belmont, maybe he's a horse that might really like Belmont with the, you know, more, more time to get his act together and maybe a more fair pace up front. Well, let's get into the stakes. We're going to take a look at uh, the Bayshore first. We'll do it in order from Saturday. Uh, Bayshore was uh, a race with uh, some very talented three-year-old sprinters in here. I was kind of interested in the race the uh, number five rocketing returns put in. Doesn't have any trouble per se at the start. And this is a horse I thought might end up on the lead. He wasn't on the lead here. He was just out sprinted early on behind a couple horses. Yeah, and you can see him in the Live Oak Silks, number five here, sort of easy to pick out. A number of things I thought happened in this race. Last horse in the picture right now is Counter Move, who got away with that incredibly easy pace on Gotham Day. He's nowhere to be found early. And here's Rocking Returns, you were pointing out, getting steady back a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you see Captain Candyman Can, the eventual winner, just moving up inside of him there in the green, number four. And you know what? Uh, Rocketing Returns has kind of steadied back a little bit here. I just didn't understand why he didn't go up and, and try to run uh, with Captain Candyman here, Jockey Joe Bravo, and steady opposite take back. And then, you know, puts Rocketing Returns on the chase here. You know, this seems to be the point in the race where the pace kind of picks up a little bit here. Rocketing Returns is forced to be uh, making a three, four wide move around the turn. He actually puts in a pretty good move here. He's going to come into a fourth position, I think, turning for home, but just flatten out through the stretch run. You know, I don't think he's a stakes caliber horse. I think he's probably an allowance horse, but dropping in uh, to an allowance race in a field where there's not a whole ton of speed, I think this horse might be able to find himself in the lead. And I thought this move was pretty solid here, although he flattens out later. Yeah, he does make a nice middle move in the race. I agree with that. He does flatten out at the end, which I don't particularly like. I don't know what to do with this horse. He broke his maiden. He had some issues with Saratoga. He finished second. In his, in his first start where he hurt his foot a little bit in that race, came back towards the end of the Belmont Mace meet and ran a sensational race, breaking his maiden. You want to race at Calder? It's disappointing in Florida. You're right about this race. He shows in this race that he can run a little bit. I just don't know what to do with him anymore. He just feels like he's kind of overrated. And what price are we going to get to on him coming back in an allowance race? I guess it depends how tough the race is. Yeah, that's true. I mean, he does uh, has shown some talent. Uh, certainly his last two figs down at Gulfstream weren't anything to write home about. He won uh, with an 84 buyer at uh, Calder, and then uh, the next two races down at Gulfstream were 78, 77. I can't imagine this race is going to come back too tall a figure here, even with the presence of Captain Candyman Ken Ooh, winning so impressively. Right, but it's going to be similar to the Gulfstream numbers, and you, 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 you do make a fair case that he ran a little bit better than it looks like 
like he ran on paper. So maybe he is getting close to those numbers in the mid-80s, but you know, that's not exceptional time. He is, of course, disappointing, but we'll see where he runs next. I do think you're right, though. He ran better than it looks on paper. I'm just, I guess maybe I'm just disappointed in the horse he, he's been running as because he looked like he was going to be a better. He looked like a horse who might be able to challenge in a race like this. Yeah, I agree. I just, uh, you know, I thought he would show more speed early on, too. I thought he'd be part of the pace, and he wasn't. And actually, the pace setters pretty much held on pretty well there. Yano, the 49-1 yeah. shot, who set the pace, held on for third. Uh, Takarub is right up there the whole way and uh, finished second. And Captain Candyman can wasn't far behind after making that move just inside of uh, Rocketing Returns down the backstretch. I agree with you. The pace did hold. And, and, and speed in general was okay on Saturday. It wasn't you know carrying horses, but it certainly was you know, maybe a slight advantage or something. It's hard to really tell. Well, I guess you'd say logical horses ran one, two. We'll get into a race that was not particularly logically run, and that was the Excelsior, the following race on Saturday. Talk about speed carrying. We'll certainly see that in here, but uh, we're going to take a look at the four Kerbot uh, at uh, the start here, who uh, stumbled shortly after the start, and I think this cost him uh, some position here as uh, jockey Joe Talamo uh, finds himself in a last place going into the uh, going under the wire the first time here. And the big favorite in this race was Barrier Reef, who's also going to be affected by a slow pace that we'll see uh, developed very, very uh, slowly going into the turn. Well, a couple of things happened here. First of all, um, True Resurgence, the number five horse, being ridden by Jeffrey Sanchez, who was very eager the day before with Harold Square. Not so eager with the possible lone speed in this race and just gives the lead here to, uh, to, to Cool Coleman, who's being very well ridden by CeCe Lopez going the lead. And then, then uh, Giant Moon's outside of him. But, of course, you've got... Barrier Reef at the back of the pack, where he figures to be, and Kerbat making that a big outside move. And I could make an argument that Kerbat, who could well have been a speed in this race, him stumbling at the start hurt Barrier Reef more than it hurt Kerbat. I think so, and I also think going wide around that first turn definitely uh, hurt Kerbat as well. But uh, you see uh, the pace, just you don't need fractions to be posted up there. You can see just by the way the riders are acting that you know, the pace is very slow here, and there's not much change in order uh, as they make their way around the track. Here we see Barrier Reef and last Kerbat, uh, second to last on the outside there and uh, these horses definitely affected by the dynamics here no question about it and obviously when you've got giant moon and cool coleman running one two and finishing one two you know that nobody had a chance to close him here i don't want to knock giant moon and look i didn't like him at all going in the race so i was wrong but the bottom line is he showed nothing in his career to say he's supposed to win this race and it's the pace to get some home cool coleman Hey, cool call man I take out of this race that he couldn't win this race at a slow pace. That is a very bad sign for him. He is supposed to win this race. Now you've got Kerbat chasing four wide, of course, in those sort of familiar silks. And you've got Barrier Reef between horses, and Ramon is trying to put him in position. And Barrier Reef's somewhat of a tough horse to ride because he's got that quick burst. But he's the kind of horse I'm sure Ramon was afraid. If he put him in the clear in the back stretch, he might have just taken off. And how is that going to work for him? So he took his best chance. Alazo is buried inside, chasing inside behind the slow pace. True Resurgence is sick and tired of eating dirt behind that slow pace. And Barrier Reef is the only one that tries to put in a run from behind here. But this race is just clearly dominated in the front end. No closer had any chance whatsoever. You're going to see Alazo sort of closing into fifth or so on the outside, as three at the wire together. Barrier Reef's a better horse than these, I have to believe. And the race was dynamics, not ability so much. Absolutely. So the first two uh, front runners there to steal away on the lead, and that certainly affected Barrier Reef, and I think, you know, to some extent, Kerbot as well, who was forced to go wide around both turns, lost the ground at the start and around the turns, was 5-1 to one in this race. i got to think he's this is just a throwout race for him. Absolutely. I, I agree. I mean, I don't know. Kerbat, Kerbat ran well, pretty well, actually, down in Maryland in his one start in this country. Got a 100 buyer figure. See if he can run in New York. See if some of these horses show up on the undercard in the Preakness. Anyway, that does it for the first segment of Trips and Traps. Once again, we want to give you that email address. It is Trips and traps at nairainc.com. We love to hear from you, your thoughts on our thoughts, your thoughts on some of the races we show or don't show, races you'd like to see. Please keep the emails coming. And thank you again for watching the first segment of Trips and Traps. We'll be back with the Wood Memorial and the Carter in the second segment. Stay tuned.